inside I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. forever forever worship you I can only We take just a moment right now to make sure that all our phones are on either silent or vibrate or turned off. Um, God calls in mysterious ways and sometimes even during a service. So we want to make sure that, that that's cared for. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. 
Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Fred Grant Henry Sr. put on Christ, so in Christ may Fred be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, we have gathered here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Fred. We come together in our grief acknowledging that human loss. May God grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Let us pray. Lord God, we have given you thanks and continue to today for the life that you give each one of us. It is so fabulous. It's wonderful and it's mysterious. There's work and there's labor and there are tears and there is joy. And soon it is all past and gone like a dream. We lift up, we give you thanks for eternal life, for your light that illumines our short days and fills them with all of eternity. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see that it is he who opens the gate to the life that never dies. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout. The universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarcely take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great 
thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. I was told it was okay to say a little something after the song. So if you don't know me, my name is Cammie Wilkie. I am number 11 in the lineup of 14 grandchildren to Fred and Joyce Henry. And over the past few days, I've had the privilege of creating Grandpa's Celebration of Life video. And it has been really incredible to see his life unfold in these photographs. Everything from grandpa as a baby in 1936 to photos of his final days. And as I was creating this video, the more that I studied grandpa's life, the more that I realized that he truly did live the American dream. If you didn't know, he went to a one-room schoolhouse that to this day still sits on his farm where he rode his horse to school. He met the love of his life, Joyce Henry, at 15 years old, and as grandma used to describe, it really was love at first sight. He had four beautiful children, 14 grandchildren who absolutely adored him, and even more great-grandchildren with our 61st family member due to be born in the spring. With his father, he built a business that has now employed and supported four generations of his family from great-grandpa Henry down to his grandsons that are sitting in this room. He traveled the world with his wife, and most of all, he loved the Lord. And as a young adult myself who often wonders how to make the most of this life, I began to ask myself, how do you get any better than the life that Fred Henry lived? And the answer is you don't. I know so many of you are hurting today because you loved Grandpa so much. He was easy to love. And I believe that if he was able to sit next to you in the pew right now and give you one last parting message before entering into eternity with Jesus, it would go a little something like this. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm in heaven now, and I love you. Thank you. I have several scriptures to share with you this morning. You no, know, we, as we sat and thought about this and talked about Fred and Fred's life, there were several that came up and they're like, oh, just choose one or two. <laughs> Sorry, get them all. Um, because they all exemplify who, who Fred was as uh, a, a person of faith and a person of this community and a person of the greater community, but especially as a person who loved and adored his family. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and always a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Psalm 23, which uh, both of these first psalms were a great comfort to um, or these both of these first scriptures were a comfort to Fred in his last days, and, and so they are essential to share with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths he, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the very darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare me a table before, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And we have two from the, from the book of John. Uh, first from John 3, verses 11 through 17. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive my testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may indeed have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And John 14, 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If, you were, if it were not so, would I have told you to go there and prepare a place for me, for you? Did I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let me tell you, Fred has a lot of stories to be told. And we're not going to get it done in the next five or ten minutes, okay? So that's what lunch is for, right? We're going to have time of fellowship, a time when we gather together and share that love and share those stories and how he impacted all the lives of so many here and even more that were here last night that couldn't be here today. And all those folks who could not be part of either one but might be watching a recording or might be uh, just at home knowing that they have lost a great person who affected their life in a positive way. See, I think that there may be folks from around Council Bluffs, specifically the Manamwa area, who will now miss a camper in the Walmart parking lot. But here's why I bring that up first. Because this man of faith, this man of, of unconditional love, he did not meet strangers. He affected the folks, even at Walmart, at the restaurants around, at the people who he would meet on a, on a walk. He shared with them as a communicator of love, as a lover of all, as someone who wanted to know your story, 
that guy made a huge difference in the world around him. What stories there are to tell. Because because he didn't, you know, just drive the camps, camper around. He knew every good place to eat, right? If, if you wanted to know where to go, just, just ask Fred, and he'd say, well, if you go down here, take a right. But his story and the stories that we tell in, in our time together all come down to the fact that he listened to those words, those words that come from scripture that we didn't share this morning, but, but yet the words are echoed in everything that we heard, especially from John, love each other. Love each other well, love each other fully, live each, love each other condi- unconditionally. This is the way that, that Christ lived and the way that Christ modeled. And as people of faith, you know, I, I stand in this room um, almost every Sunday and say, hey, how are we going to live this out when we walk out the doors? Maybe give an example or two of what we might do. You didn't have to tell Fred that. He knew that deep in his heart, that it wasn't about in these walls. It wasn't about when he's sitting in these pews. It was about what happened when he walked out that door. And who he loved in the midst of that, who he cared for in the midst of that, who his generosity overflowed onto in the midst of that. And then there's there's Joyce. What a way of unconditional love, right? His care for her all those years, not only as children and young adults, but in older age and in illness, What a testament to unconditional love and how to love well in a marriage relationship. A great example for all these folks over here. See, he did well. He said, if you love someone, multiply that love. And this is the result. And this is the result. And that's the result. Because he knew that multiplying love was what God called him to. And he did it with a clear and open heart. That care for Joyce was unbelievable, right? Helping her maintain her dignity, helping her get through her days, and always having something fun for her to do, like, you know, dress all the kids up and go out to dinner together, like ducklings, right? I understand that 64 Club was was quite the spot. Uh, That was before my time. Really, before, I mean, 64 was when I was born, so. Um, But, so it really was before my time. Uh, But the thing is, is that he said, let's get dressed up and let's go. Let's celebrate. Let's teach these kids how to be who we want them to be. So Joyce believed in that journey, that part of the journey, right? She, she kind of followed no matter where he went, but she dressed the kids up and they would go and they, they were classy. That was the word that kept coming up, a classy couple. And they taught their kids how to do that as well. And it was reflected to their grandchildren and will be to these greats that are, that are represented here today. Speaking of those grandkids, Here's some words that came up. Happy, funny, ornery, donuts, very genuine, and and there were donuts this morning, generous, engaging, family, and proud. I often talk about the legacy we leave on days like today, and this is a legacy to be proud of. This is a legacy to be filled with pride and thankful that that we had been placed in the place that God placed Red, right? That we could live that life together, that we could hear those stories. Whether it was a trip to Chicago on the 10th birthday, and really was there only one of you or two of you that had to go together, you all got separate ones except two, right? 
Sorry, guys. Maybe his sense of humor that would not end. He would take the ki grandkids to the Walmart campground and tell scary stories that they were pretty sure were not appropriate for their age and then tell them to go to sleep. He loved each one of them unconditionally. Unconditionally. He continually told all of them, all 60 slash 61 of them, continually how proud he was of them and how much he loved him. And he didn't just do it with words. He did it with the way he ran his life. And although nearly every vehicle he drove ran out of gas, Fred never did. He kept that going for, throughout his life. So this faith that we hear about in the scriptures that we heard this morning, that faith that reminds us that God sent God's son for us and not to condemn us, but to save us. I would hazard to guess that in Fred's life, he saved some folks. Whether it was through his generosity, his humor, his love of Halloween costumes, his love of Joyce. In the last 24 hours of Fred's life, he said some very, very wise things. And there was some time when maybe the family wasn't quite sure if they were t he was t really talking to the, him, to them, to himself, or maybe even to Jesus. But the words that they heard were words that they were familiar with. I sure love Joyce. I sure love Joyce. He also surely loved Jesus and every person gathered here and all those that he meant on his journeys, whether near or far. And he loved them well. May our legacies be even a portion of what his has been for us to dwell in. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we stand before you today with our hearts open. We hide no secrets. We might feel that there is shame or sorrow for, for the things we have or have not done. Sometimes that is seeking your will or doing your will. Sometimes we feel like we aren't truthful in our hearts and in our speech and in our lives. Some days we feel we have not loved as we ought to love. Help us and heal our pain, raising us from, from those things into a better life, confident in you, that we may end our days in peace trusting in you unto the end. We praise you for that great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you at this moment in silence. Especially we praise you for Fred, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these saints, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us, help us to believe where we have not seen and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home that is not made with hands, but instead is eternal in the heavens. We join together now as your children in the prayer your gracious and loving son taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you would take out the, the red hymnal that's in your pews and turn to page 707, the hymn of promise. <laughs> family welcomes you to join together in uh, lunch in a time of memories at our community center here in Oakland. If you are unfamiliar with town, just go up to high, Highway 59-6 up here and you're going you're gonna to turn right and you're going to go almost to the end of town as in every small town in Iowa. When you see Dollar General, you turn and that will get you to the community center where we will gather. In the meantime, we will, if you're going out to the cemetery, we will um, be heading out to our cars and you can follow in line there. But to make this process all go as smoothly as possible with folks coming and going at different times, let's go ahead and share a blessing over our meal at this time. Lord God, you have been with us in this time of sorrow and will continue to be because, because we know this is not the end. It is the beginning of something new. And so as we travel this, this road, might we travel it together, supporting and loving each other, much as Fred would have, have um, encouraged us to do and modeled for us. As we meet to partake of food and fellowship, Lord, bless the hands that have prepared the food and served the food and will clean up. Bless those who are together in fellowship and sharing those stories. Bless those who, who might need to go back to work, who might need to go back home. Might we all be reminded that we are all in mourning. And it's okay, though, to celebrate in that because that is part of of the process. So today, as we continue to celebrate this life of Fred, be with us, and might we honor you in thanksgiving and praise throughout the day. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. And now, as we leave this place, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and be with you now and forever. Amen. I 
I'm a pilgrim and a stranger Wandering through this world of sin On my way to that test city When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in when the saints go marching in lord i want to be in that number when the saints go marching in oh i know i'll see my savior if my life is free from sin, heaven's doors will open for me when the saints go marching in. When we gather round the throne and the gates are closed within, Shouting glory, glory When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in Lord, I want to be in that number 